Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen. And my guest today is Melissa. Okay. <laughs> and um, we're going to be talking about food and diet and how all of this is really the basis, even though you don't want to admit it. So um, <laughs> Melissa is um, is a recipe developer. She is committed to using the best ingredients possible in her kitchen. And she is the creator and founder of The Fresh 20, uh, a former cooking instructor, television writer, and 15-year internet professional. Melissa believes health starts in the kitchen and unprocessed food is the path to wellness. So welcome, Melissa. And it's, a, it's I'm all looking food. forward. Food, food, food. <laughs> food is the food is the way. I feel like uh, my my kids watch a show called The Mandalorian and it's always like, this is oh, the yeah. way. And I'm like, food <laughs> is the way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, oh man. I have been teaching people and giving people resources on food for the last 13 years and probably all my life if I really wanted to look at it. Mm. Um, I had a really bad relationship with food when I was younger and growing up and a teenager and um, a really bad relationship with food. And I was raised, my mom worked for Litton Microwaves, which people don't oh, even no. know what it is anymore, but they were like the original yes, microwave. That's company. right. I remember and that. So yeah. I ate a lot of microwave food. My mom only knew how to cook like five things. So um I had to slowly as like I hit every single decade, like reevaluate and check in and kind of upgrade and up level my relationship with food until yeah. finally I was like, I want to do this. I want to do this for everyone. Like I want people to eat better. Yeah. Um and so, yeah, I, I really do think that starts in the kitchen, mm -hmm. especially as we start to age. I can tell you just, um, as I was, we, I was mentioning before, we've had over 200,000 subscribers in the Fresh 20 yeah. in the last 13 years. And I have a, a, an amazing community of people that um, really do want to do better at their, at their kitchen uh -huh. table. Um, and they really want the resources. And what I found is as I've grown up with my audience, they, they, they're aging with me as well. And now the conversation is less about like healthy eating for their kids and more like, okay, like I need, something's happening to me. Something's happening yeah. to my body. Like how do I use yeah. food to combat aging, to combat what's happening? Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. like a conversation that I'm so happy to talk about today because I think it's really yeah. important and we can look at all of the other things in life, food is like the number one instigator mm -hmm. to disease, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the opinion of a lot of studies and a lot of, 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 yeah. of oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I think yeah. it's important. It's important to figure out, okay, is there a change in lifestyle that we have to make? Do we have to make mm -hmm. changes to our diet as we mm -hmm. start to get older? Mm -hmm. um, I think, yes. I think, you know, mm -hmm. making a, a change to your diet might mean having to give up things that you enjoyed before right. that might not have been as detrimental yeah. to your body, but now they're presenting problems and listening to our body as we, as we age, there's no better way than to say, okay, I get it. Like I cannot have croissants anymore. Like it just destroys yeah. me. Right. Or whatever yeah. it may be. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Cake with ice cream, you know. <laughs> yeah I think ice cream is just a straight as much as I love it it's a straight no for me at this point uh -huh. but but thankfully because our society is getting on board that like not everybody can have dairy thankfully there are so many Thank good you. vegan ice cream makers yes. right? oh my god yeah yeah it's that thing of, yeah. of still the, the the same things that people have wanted to teach their kids right and what we've been teaching for years in the fresh 20 is there's a correlation between what you eat and how you feel. And we, mm. we drill that into children's brains of like, you know, make good choices and, 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 you know, yeah. don't know, maybe one scoop of ice cream is enough. Maybe we don't have to have the whole pint. Like you make, and then I feel like you kind of forget for yourself as you get older, yeah. that a lot of the things that you're feeling, a lot of the aches that you experience, a lot of the, the inflammation that might be happening in your system, we forget, oh, that's right. I need to check in on my diet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I can, 
I can attest that, you know, something as simple as, as allergies, which I have a lot of food allergies, they change. Yeah. There are things that I was allergic to, you know, 15, 20 years ago that I'm not anymore. They don't bother me, but there's a whole other list that I can't eat anymore. Yeah. So it, it changes as your body changes. It does. It does change. Yeah. And taking stock of like what, like having that relationship and especially like really solidifying that bond between your mouth and your belly, like, you know, that your, your taste buds <laughs> and your that. gut, yeah. like, and like, and, and saying, uh-huh. okay, you know, it's, it's okay to indulge every once in a while, but indulge knowing how it's going to make you feel and how it's going to affect the next 72 mm-hmm. hours of your life. Right. Oh my God. And yeah. I, I feel this so much when I have, okay. I know that you're have a wheat allergy, but I'm going to tell you mm-hmm. like, I and if, if my last meal was bread and butter, I would be a happy person. Like I cannot mm-hmm. get enough bread and butter. I love it, but I don't have it a lot, you know, in my life just because I know what it does to me. And it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. I even start thinking like, if I'm going to go to a yoga class, I'm like, I can't have any, I can't have any bread products and no, no carb products like the day before, because if I uh-huh. do, I'm just, I'm crushed. Like I can't, I can heart like I it's my road I can't yeah. I can't and we sometimes don't understand you're like oh I woke up feeling a little funny and you're like well check what you ate yesterday because chances are it has something yeah. to do with what you consumed and your body is taking on the brunt of that like it's trying to absorb nutrients it's trying to and and things are firing off and you have less internal protection now mm-hmm. in your gut and than you uh, did, you know, 20 years ago. And that's just yeah. what happened. Aging, like the, our levels start to drop across the board. And so does the lining of our gut starts to uh-huh. change, especially if we're feeding it food that. So it's really, you know, listen, you can't entirely prevent like inflammation well, no. as we mm-hmm. grow older, but you can manage it with food. A lot of people switch to medication. Like they're like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to take a med. And it's like, please try food first. Cause food is the best medicine that is readily available that you can control that wasn't made in a lab. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I'm really passionate about how food can, can kind of, yeah. it can really give you um, energy and it can give you um, it's, it's like a vital force that we need as we yeah. start to get older. Um, yeah. and so I'm really passionate about, about, about what food can do for you and especially mm-hmm. to avoid medication and to still mm-hmm. like live a vibrant life and do the things that you have always done. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I think there are still, even in this day and age, um, a lot of people who don't understand food sensitivities mm-hmm. and food allergies. Yeah. And and number one, they think, oh, I've eaten it for the last 20 years, and so I should still be able to eat it. And it's like, nope, wrong. Take that one off. Yeah. Um, and it's always the last thing they look at. Yeah, I think that's part of like not listening to the body, right? And it's mm-hmm. like, I think we, as a, you know, as a society, we overeat, we over portion, mm-hmm. and we have so many things on the market to tell us it's mm-hmm. okay to do that. Just drop an antacid or, you know, like mm-hmm. it's going to be fine. But it's like, you're dropping an antacid because you gave your stuff yourself things that your body couldn't adjust to and so I think when you listen to what those things are and you just really say okay I ate you know I mean it took me like five years to realize that there was one particular kind of beans that made my body not feel well and I because I was like I don't understand why I don't feel good like I don't have an I like beans are not a thing for me but there's just one type of bean that I cannot eat and I was like I wonder, but it took me a while to like yeah. listen and because I was just ignoring, I'm like, I'm not allergic to beans. Like what? Like, that's crazy. Like, you know, I live in Southern California, like, no way I'm not having beans, <laughs> but, but it took a while. So I think when you listen, it's really important. Yeah. And one thing that I always, so we do this thing in the fresh 20, we have um, something uh-huh. called a mind body reset and the mind body reset. It's not supposed to be a diet. It's supposed to be an elimination of the things that typically right. upset your gut. So we take uh-huh. out all gluten, all dairy and all sugar for four mm-hmm. weeks so that our body can really like 
just clear out of all of the things that are constantly giving like little messages of like, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, I have gas. Oh, I have indigestion. Oh, mm-hmm. my body aches mm-hmm. that we ignore. Right. Right. Yeah. Take all of those things back, take them away. And then our bodies mm-hmm. like starts firing on all cylinders. We fill it with hydration. We fill it with like fresh fruits and vegetables, like really, but just taking out dairy, sugar, or gluten, uh-huh. then we slowly, if we want, bring those things back into play yeah. and immediately uh-huh. and not all together, like one at oh, a time, no. uh, like a little right. bit of sugar in your coffee then. And immediately your body has a reaction to it. And people are amazed because <laughs> they're like, I never knew that yeah. sugar affected me in that way. I never knew that dairy made me feel like that because we're just eating it without thinking uh-huh. mindfully about what it is, right? But once yeah. you remove yeah. it for four weeks and then you put it back in, your body's like, it yeah. tells you immediately, nope, I don't like that. Or or it says, yeah, that's okay. Really, really interesting. The sugar. And if we were going to talk about those three things as far as aging uh-huh. and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, and that's fine. Let's go for it. Sugar, right? We don't, we forget how sugar affects the human body. But we all remember seeing those kids that they had sugar and then they went crazy, right? We all yeah. know those, those we've, we've seen it happen in, in, in our lives many, many times where you're like, somebody, a, a kid has sugar and then they're just like off. Bouncing off the wall. Like right? crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. Why do we think that as we get older, that that sugar effect is not happening to us? What's happening to us is that we're building up a tolerance for it right? Uh, So that it becomes a little bit less and less and less of a reaction, but it doesn't mean that it's less detrimental to your body. Uh It just means that your body is saying, okay, like I'm trying to find ways to handle this sugar. And so I'm not going to be hyper anymore. Now I'm going to be depressed, right? Now sugar is going to make, because your body, like the the machine that is your body is trying to figure out what to do with this element that you're putting into it. Right. right. But it still uh-huh. has an effect. And I think we yeah. forget if we don't have that same reaction, we think, Oh, well, yeah. sugar doesn't bother me. But, sh- but what some people don't recognize is that sugar can do the exact opposite, right? It can make mm. your body like hyper internally and then bring down your mental state and make you uh, like, give you a little bit of depression or fog or things like that. Okay. So we okay. always have to be checking in on what's happening. And then the same with gluten or dairy, you know, I mean, yeah. go off the dairy for, for 10 days and then, and then go back and then have a scoop of ice cream and tell me that it doesn't have an effect on your body, your, your, you know, your yeah. hands, when you move, like when you're moving your hands, I mean, oh yeah, it make, it can make some people, it makes their hands swell. Some yep. people, it just gives them like internal aches, but it does have an effect on a majority of people. I think it's really important to consider the diet and to remember that like the goal of like aging is to feel as good as possible for as long as possible, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Inflammation is one of those things that makes us not feel good in so many different ways. Yeah. And and adopting an anti-inflammation diet is so important as we age. It's so important as we age. I would say that in some, and then, you know, some studies that have been going on in a lot of conversations with, you know, mm-hmm. the nutritionists and everything and my peers, they really believe that inflammation and studies are showing that inflammation is a leading cause of disease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yep. I mean, if we want to feel as good as we can for as long as we want, yeah. don't we look at how inflammation is affecting our bodies uh-huh. as we age? I mean, I think it's yeah. I think it's really important. And it's hard because I always imagined I was gonna get to a point in life where I was gonna be like, I can eat anything I want because I deserve it. I'm not trying to fit into anything. I like, you know, I'm 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 just imagining this point where I'm a, a woman, I'm on my porch, I have my purple hat and I'm doing whatever and, and I can I eat whatever it. I want, right? Like, I'm uh-huh, uh-huh, and uh-huh. I just have to think to myself, like, wrong. yeah, that's not necessarily how it's going to go. Right. Wrong. Um, and so <laughs> I think I, you know, there's a, there's a trade-off and it's not that big of a trade-off if you just 
make some small tweaks to your, mm -hmm. to your diet, you mm -hmm. still can enjoy and make memories with food and enjoy food. There's yeah. so much good food. Like, um, oh my God, yeah. I mean, there's 2,500 varieties of, um, I'm just thinking like in a, I, a, a produce company, like a Melissa's produce company, they, I think they have 2,700 uh -huh. SKUs of fresh, 2,700 wow. different SKUs. So you cannot tell me that like, oh, there's nothing to eat. If I don't, if I go on an anti-inflammation diet, like I won't be satisfied. You know, once you get off of that for a little while, your body stops, uh -huh. eating, right? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. it's absolutely so, and plus like absolutely cherries blueberries strawberries all anti-inflammation yeah. like really good you know things for yeah. anti-inflammation snack yeah. on those nuts and seeds amazing for right. anti-inflammation yeah. snack yeah. on something like that you know fatty fish like salmon is really good if you do the oh, sardines, yeah. tuna healthy oils you know um mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of things that we could be doing um, I don't think anybody's life is going to be over if they have to give up soda and fried food. That's true. See, I'm going to say it. I'm that, gonna, that was, yeah. I'm going to just put it out there. I promise your life will not end if you have to give up soda, fried food, maybe red meat. I don't know. It depends. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Cookies. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know just personally that, um, no, well, number one, I never liked soda. Mm -hmm. I was a very strange little kid because I, Coca-Cola, Oh God, just the thought of it. I still can't, I couldn't drink it uh, under any circumstances. It's just the taste of it. Just, ah. But um, it is, it is kind of funny because as the other thing that happens is as we age is that our bodies can't, we give, we give our bodies too many calories to actually use because we're not efficient. We're now, you know, the older you get, the less efficient. I mean, you and I talked about this earlier, you, you know, you just get, and you think, oh, well, I used to eat da, 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 da. And I felt fine. It's like, well, yeah. And your point yeah. is, it's, yeah, it's like you can't, you can't anymore. Are you still? I used to be able old? to read a magazine oh, no. that was right here too. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. 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 Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. I think it's interesting. Um, you know, there's just, there's, there's so much in our, there's so much presented to us through societal communication and media and everything else mm. about, about food and about, it's like, you can have every anything you want, and then you can just diet it away or, you know, yeah. and I think like, that it's no. just such the wrong message to send. And, but we're all indoctrinated into this idea that, you know, we should be able to eat all of these things that are really bad for us because, mm -hmm. I mean, they've been thrown in our face our entire life. Yeah. And so um, I think it's hard. I, I'm not, I'm not discounting that it's hard to mm -hmm. change your diet or mm -hmm. to, um, I know it's hard. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I absolutely, absolutely struggle. If somebody came yeah. to my house right now with a wheel of brie and a fresh French warm baguette, then I would literally excuse myself from this, this podcast. And I would go yeah. and pick my face. In it. Like, I'm not kidding. Like I, <laughs> I am not saying that it's not hard sometimes, but uh -huh. I think the more that we can make conscious choices about food yeah. that we can have more leafy greens that we can have nuts as a snack instead of chips uh -huh. where we can you know give up for people that are soda drinkers uh -huh. give up soda yeah. for you know a flavor for a, you know lemon in your water lime in your water coconut yeah, in your yeah water, just special occasions or something if, yeah have, if you have can a soda do all of those things i mean we have never been a soda household so the only time yeah. that we have soda is at the movies so literally uh -huh. like, Okay. Even if you come to my house for a party, there's rarely, there's, I, yeah. there's no soda here, but it becomes something that it's like, it's actually special. It's like, we're going to, we're going yeah. to movies today and we're having popcorn and a soda. And that's like, uh -huh. you know, but it's like twice a year, you know? So I'm not, I'm not saying <laughs> give up everything forever in perpetuity uh -huh. and never enjoy but uh -huh. I want to feel good every day. Yeah. I want to be able to do my yoga yeah. class without like feeling my muscles tense and the mm. inflammation in my internal yeah. swollen. I want to be able to go on a walk with my husband and not have pain in my ankles. Mm. And my belly is, you know, I want to go through the day without yeah. a bloated belly, you know, without my belly just yeah. like bloated and working overtime. And like you said, I think part of it 
it's not just the food, but part of it is also the portions. When I, when I, uh, when I first met my, my husband, he's a, he comes from a Iowa meat and potatoes family. Right. Um, and portions to him were like a 12 ounce steak was, was a dinner. And when I started the fresh 20 and our portion sizes for meats and proteins is, um, four ounces. And I remember the first few times I like started cooking for him with like more of a balanced plate, more of, mm. you know, a meal that mm. was not, you know, a yeah. tons of calories. Um, he was like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> Is that like, just the first course like you gave the first it, right? Round? What's happening <laughs> yeah. here? But it's really interesting because we've been together now almost almost 24 years. And he has such a <laughs> thank you. Um in LA, might I ma- might I add? Yeah, like, I know. That I know exactly. California to be married. That yeah. seems like we I feel like we support the divorce rate, our state is like really crazy I think so yeah but now he looks at it and he really understands that if he eats 12 ounces of steak he is going to be really sick like he's not going to feel good yeah um and it takes time you know it takes time of saying well why don't you just try to have like a meal that only has that why don't you just try to you know if you go to a restaurant and it has you know huge portions Mm -hmm. a I always Mm -hmm. split with someone because I know I'm not going to eat it but even if you Mm -hmm. don't want to split why not just try taking, asking for another plate, taking half of it off and eating the half that's on your plate first before you finish. Uh, uh-huh. and you can go yeah. home and still feel good and not feel like, right. you know, you don't have to tumble home. You don't have to like, <laughs> you know, walk because you're like, oh, I'm so full. Yeah. Cool. Like that is not, yeah. that is not what our bodies intended by having this mechanism that we could eat and digest. It, yeah. Our bodies did not mean, oh, I'm I'm so full. Like what? It, like like crazy that that is a normal happenstance in our lives with food mm. that we mm-hmm. eat to be overfull. So yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you on the portion thing because I think that as we get older, reducing our portions but making those portions matter is really important. Right. Not reducing yeah. our portions by getting rid of meals or you know eating like a bird. Right. We're not in, we're not reducing our portions to mm-hmm. eat bird seed. Right. But we are reducing our portions to have more of the good things mm. like the leafy mm. grains, like the seeds, yeah. like the, you know, mm. the the berries and the things with the antioxidants and eating uh-huh. less of the things that are going to really weigh us down. So uh-huh. you can live a fully vibrant life with, you know, three meals a day and a snack and still be under like 1400 calories, uh-huh. which is always oh, what yeah. I'm, I'm always mm. aiming for without, you know, uh-huh. I'm not a calorie counter. Um, but I know now that I don't like to eat more than my hand. I just know that like if it, if it, whatever fits in my hand is okay. what I am willing to eat. So I literally can go like that on a plate uh-huh. and look at it and, and just say, okay, that's too much. Or I may need something else, but I use my hands. Uh, I feel like it's the best interesting. that I have because uh-huh. it's attached to my size. Huh. Yeah, no, that's so, a good point. That's um, a very good just point. one of the yeah. things that I'm one of the crazy things that I do. <laughs> yeah, well, you have a bigger hand than I do. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. You're probably taller than I am, too. I bet. <laughs> I probably am. I don't know how tall you are, but I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I think I'm considered tall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm not as tall as I was. So what, ha- like, what is, is there a way that we can fix that? that? Like, I mean, all I wish. this research that we do, up, and we're still straight, shrinking. Sit up straight. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it. But um, I don't know. I, I think it's just part of being awesome. being on this planet a little bit longer. You know, yeah. things things not only wear down, they wear out yeah. if you're not careful. The compression factor and everything, but it's just yeah. like, oh. it's from ga- gravity, right? Yeah, it is. But I mean, listen, I'd rather be shorter and healthy and, um, than, than, than and tall alive. and, and, and yeah. have less longevity, <laughs> right? Longevity is, yeah. it becomes really, really important as you want to see your kids come into their full fruition or if you have more things to do on the planet that you are really yeah. happy about. Um, 
I think that longevity is something that people just don't think about until they're in their fifties. Mm-hmm. And some people don't even consider it until I, after 50. that. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, especially these, especially these days. And I think, and you and I kind of talked about this a little bit before we got on um, the recording, but I think women start to feel it in their fifties, mostly because of menopause starting. Um, and men don't really feel it till they get in their 60s. Mm-hmm. And it isn't that it hasn't started. It's just something to do with, with I don't know whether it's all procreation or, or what, but um, it is interesting, the differences. Yeah, I, we were talking about before, like I just think yeah. that the changes that women start to experience happen mm-hmm. physically, mentally, yes emotionally. And I just think that it's a little different for men because I think, you know, again, my belief that Mm -hmm. they're not really recognizing it until it hits them physically, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not quite the same. And then the physical acknowledgement that something's Mm -hmm. changing, I think then triggers for them the mental and emotional. But I think for women, we go through a a bodily process that emotionally and mentally affects us first, right? Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and then and then the physical is like the end cap. It's like <laughs> let yeah. me just let me just end cap this experience with uh right. giving you some physical changes, mainly around yeah. the belly. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it so, is, it is yeah, kind of funny. Cause because for some women as well, I mean, you know, you hit menopause and it's like, great, I don't have to deal with a period anymore. Yeah. You yeah. know, and men don't have that kind of demarcation line. You know, there's as much is as, as much um can't think of what the right word is, but slower and a little it's bit more subtle at a time. Thank it's you. It's more subtle, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, it's more subtle until they wake up one day and like they, 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 you know, go and do something that they've done their whole entire lives and they've been really yeah. good at and now somebody else does it better and they're faster and they can't keep up and then they're like, Yeah, yeah. What's happening? And then and then it starts this whole entire, you know, mental exercise of, oh my God, Mm -hmm. I'm getting older. (laughs) Yeah. I could have told you that. Yeah. You are, you are getting older. It's like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, you are, you are. And if you wait a couple more years, we'll just say you're old. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) But it is, I mean, it is interesting how, um, and again, like I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so bought into the idea that food can, can help in every way, not just physically, but just also mentally. Right. Like Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so important and you can start to see like the things that Uh, will, will change your mood, will change your energy level. Um, And then also too, like, I feel like, I feel like we don't get enough sleep um, for sure that our body can actually restore and real sleep. And people think, Oh, you know, you get older and you think, oh, you don't, you're not sleeping as much. Or may, or some people are like, they don't, they're like, oh, my clock is ticking. Like, I don't want to sleep as much. Like I want to, mm-hmm. you know, but the reality is Wrong. that the more sleep that you can get, the more you're firing on all cylinders when you're actually yeah. awake. And I think that um, food plays a part of that too. Like, I think, you know, especially as you get mm-hmm. older, eating close to bedtime is not a great idea. I agree. Uh, it's especially uh, sugar it, or any of those kind of things. Yeah. I mean, I would say enough. anything like after I, I think yeah, three I hours agree. before you go to sleep, you should stop eating completely yeah. and just have water. Yeah. I think that our body, you don't want your gut to be the thing that your sleep energy is going to the entire night, right? If you're thinking about, if you think about sleep, right? You want to sleep, you want to restore, you want all of your, you want, you want your cells to like Mm -hmm. regenerate. So you wake up in the morning, right? So that you have a clear mind and, you know, a, 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 a beating heart and everything and you have energy, but just imagine like you're eating an hour before you go to bed. So instead of your body working on, you know, like regenerating uh-huh. cells and rest and restoration right. it's literally it's all of that energy food. while you're sleeping is going to digesting yeah. mm-hmm. and so i just i think it's it's yeah. it's not a great idea um and again i think everybody's got to find their own cadence oh my god and yeah. i think that experimenting and seeing mm-hmm. so that you can see for yourself right so right. never just believe me or you or even yeah. your doctor oh like, yeah try it for yourself. So, you know, try a week with stopping eating, you know, at, you know, before three, 
30 uh-huh. minutes before you go to bed yeah. and see, do you sleep better? Do you wake yeah. up better? Test yeah. it out. Yeah. I always yeah. tell everyone, um, the other thing I wanted to say about food is the quality of your ingredients matters. It's very, very important to try to get is the, the, the best quality that you can afford. And um, but I always tell everyone with, with food. And if you don't believe me about the quality of things, you know, you take a, um, oh my gosh, the salt with the umbrella mm-hmm. girl on it. Oh yeah. You know, I know which what salt I'm mean. talking about? Like, yeah. I grew up on yeah. that salt. If yeah. you take that salt and you take a sea salt or, um, any mm-hmm. type of mm-hmm. uh, a kosher salt or a sea salt or, right. a, um, not processed and you taste them side by side, you will understand what I mean when I say that umbrella girl salt is literally meant to be in your bathroom for your feet. You should not put it in food. <laughs> I would and agree. It's like, I well, would I agree. use that salt all the time. And I was like, just do the experiment. Just tell me if you taste yeah. that salt and you taste any other natural sea salt or kosher salt, or if you taste the difference and you still don't like, cause it tastes like a chemical, right? Yeah. And, and I think you should do that with everything taste test, figure out what you like, figure out, yeah. you know, how your body is working, figure out what does give you inflammation, do little tests uh-huh. all the time so that you can constantly yeah. be optimizing, yeah. right? Because that's all we're trying uh-huh. to do as we start to age. We're trying to optimize our experience, right. optimize our body's efficiency, optimize mm-hmm. its output and its energy. And to do that, you have to treat it like a science project right? You can't just say, okay, Melissa, I'm not going to have any more gluten. Well, maybe gluten's not the thing that bothers you, right? So you've got to mm-hmm. constantly be testing mm-hmm. and figuring out what works for me, what makes oh, me yeah. feel good, and then keep track right. and then constantly mm-hmm. be checking in and making sure that yeah. that continues to make you feel good. Because like you said, we can go in and out of allergies all the time. Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we're just oh my about gosh, I'm like, have I said I too promise. much? I know. I, no, can you tell no, I'm passionate no, about this no, subject? No, I'm just, you, you're the one who has a hard stop. So that's why I'm, <laughs> so let's see in, in 25 words or less, tell me what the fresh 20 is. So the fresh 20 is an unprocessed meal planning service that uses only 20 fresh ingredients a week to make five weeknight dinners. Oh, so okay. the okay. idea it's been around since 2010. The idea mm-hmm. was that I was coming up against when my, my, my children were younger was I was going to the grocery store and buying mm. you know, 80 ingredients Lots and then of food. coming home. Yeah. And then stuff was a science project at the end of the week. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what. And I, and people were telling me that like, you know, Whole Foods was whole paycheck and, you know, that healthy eating was elitist. And I was like, healthy eating is not elitist. Like there's ways that you can do this. You just have to make a plan for it week after week. So yeah. we make the plan against okay. many okay. different categories. And so uh-huh. it's just, it's just a resource for people to use that, they want to eat on yeah, a structure. Yeah. A structure. structure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which most people need for almost anything in their lives, including their diet. So don't even get me started on that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. And did you, did I see that you have a book somewhere or not, or just a website? I, do. I have the fresh okay. 20 cookbook. Um, okay. And um, it's 16 weeks. It covers uh-huh. all four seasons. So it has four different okay. meal plans <gasps> for each season. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, a, That's good. it's a great, it's a, it's a great um, just for yeah. just kind of experimenting with what, uh-huh. like a reference, food, right? Like just getting off yeah. the takeout, getting off of, you know, processed food, uh-huh. and convenience yeah. food, but still eating and building and, if you only use 20 ingredients, what you cook on Monday goes into like stuff that you use for the rest of the week. So it's all, it's mm-hmm. like a puzzle, right? Every week, like, yeah. you know, name that tune, like how many notes yeah. does it, like how many ingredients does it take to make five weeknight dinners? And it's like 20 was the answer. So. <laughs> all, right. all right. Good deal. Okay. So that sounds good. So I will put that and your website. I assume you can get it on, on Amazon or yeah. can they oh, get yeah. it at your, at your website as well? No, Amazon is great. Amazon. Okay. And, um, okay. And like I say, I'll put your, um, I'm sure I've got it somewhere here. No, actually I don't. Um, I'll get that from you for awesome. your website. And I will put that in the show notes. Awesome. So everybody, that's Thank where you, you need to go. Thank you for letting me ramble about oh, that's anti-inflammation okay. food and getting older. I'm just, it's, no, it's, it's really important good. stuff. It's important stuff. And with that, I'm going to say that neither of us are medical professionals. And-